Um, Drew de Paso um, spent some time traveling around Scotland. Um, I think it, you got in touch with us and asked if I could help to make links with Scottish Jew. Mm -hmm. And you made lots of links of your own as well. And um, I had a very memorable trip up to Shetland with you. Um, it was a photography trip, um, which was fabulous and very exciting. And obviously Miriam's being connected with you. Edward's met you. I was at the launch of the exhibition in at the Scottish Parliament. Um, it's so anyway, without further ado, I will hand over to Judy to introduce himself and his work. Thank you. And I'm going to spotlight you, Judah. So, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Well, it's a, it's a delight to be with you all. And uh, uh, Edward, hi. Um, I, hi. Uh, it's, it's lovely to see you in this context. Uh, I, I remember that we met several times um, at, uh, at the synagogue when I was shooting there. Yeah. Uh, hello to all of you. And uh, uh, I just want to tell you what a delight it is to be able to uh, revisit this, this uh, photography project with all of you. Uh, I spent a year in uh, between uh, 2012 and, uh, and 2013 um, traveling around Scotland, uh, photographing for a book and an exhibition that came to be called Scots Jews. Uh, the idea was to put together a body of work that documented the um, contemporary Scottish Jewish community. Uh, this fundamentally was an exercise in photojournalism. And photojournalism has been described as the photography of ideas. Uh, the compelling idea that I was dealing with here uh, was how the Scottish Jewish community deals with its complex identity, with issues of faith and nationality, its relationship to its past, its relationship to its present, but perhaps most importantly, in terms of documenting a, a community, how the Scottish Jewish community relates to its future. And in order to make these ideas visible, in order to photograph them, I had to devise a question which I could use as a kind of navigation star to guide me through the project. And the question that I asked myself everywhere I went uh, in the year that I spent traveling around the country was what does it mean to be Scottish and Jewish in the 21st century? This is what I wanted the, the, the photographs to explore and in the final analysis to show. And looking for the answer to that question led me down five very different paths. Fiona, could I have the first slide, please? Yes. Uh, that's not the first one. That is, yes. Uh, the first question, that, the, the first path that I, was, uh, that I was going down was one which asked me to, to explore how does this community exp express its relationship to its tradition and its culture? In this photograph, we see a very visible expression of, of the relationship between um, the Scottish community and, and its traditions and cultures. This is a, um, this is a scene outside the Garnet Hill Synagogue, um, uh, guests waiting for a bride and groom to come out of the synagogue immediately following the ceremony. And while this image may not contain any new information for all of you, you have to remember that the photographs that I was taking for this project weren't necessarily meant for consumption by people in Scotland. Uh, for people outside Scotland, 
the idea of somebody wearing a kilt to a synagogue uh, is a very intriguing idea. And what you have here is the, the convergence of several things all at once. Uh, you have a wedding, you have a wedding at a Jewish synagogue. These are Jewish guests, but they are, they are very visibly part of yet another culture, which, is, uh, which takes a form of a, a, a nationalist cultural expression. And that's where the kilt comes in. Can we go on to the next one, Fiona? Uh, this is also a, a continuation of, of the first slide. Uh, this is the wedding reception for that, that, that couple uh, from the Garnet Hill Synagogue. Uh, they've now moved on to a, um, a reception at the hotel. And um, this is a, a very traditional part of a Jewish wedding, uh, tossing the bridegroom up in the air. Uh, and Again, you've got this convergence here of uh, a piece of, of Jewish cultural and tradition with the groom um, flying through the air in his kilt, uh, trying to, uh, to uh, retain his modesty as, as the kilt travels through the air. Next slide, please, Fiona. The uh, the she next pattern. Be coming, but she's not here. She, I spoke to her last week. Uh huh. Uh, the um, the next path that I I was taken down was uh, one that explored uh, the way in which people in the, in the community exp express their uh, relationship to a place as opposed to um, the culture and the tradition, how do they express their relationship to the place that they are from? Uh, in this photograph, this is a, a, a shepherdess up in uh, Lach Gilped. Uh, I, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, yeah? Uh, uh, this is uh, Dee Lyons, and she's a shepherdess up, up in the highlands. And what struck me was this, this perfect convergence of her relationship to not just the place, but to her, her, her faith as well. Um, as, we, as she was bringing the sheep back from the lower field on her farm, the sun just caught the... the, the glint of the Magen David, the Star of David necklace that she wears uh, around her neck. And in that split second that the, the shafts of light illuminated the Magen David, this picture for me suddenly fell into place instantly. It was D with the land that she loves and the faith that, that she uses as, as her spiritual rock. Uh, for me, this, this photograph in an instant said everything about what it means to be Scottish and Jewish. It's, it's one of my most favorite photographs in, in, in the entire project. Uh, can we go to the next one? No, back, yeah. Uh, this is, uh, uh, the uh, front room window in Dee's house. And uh, again, this is uh, a, an image that ties together uh, the idea of her culture and her place, her relationship to her culture and her relationship to her place. Uh, this is a Hanukkah that she keeps in her living room window so that anybody passing by uh, has a very clear idea of what kind of person lives in this house. Uh, Dee told me that the reason she did this was a very interesting one. Uh, we all know that in the Jewish tradition, uh, you place a mezuzah 
on your door lintel to, uh, to acknowledge the fact that a Jewish family lives in this house. D for years had tried to get a rabbi to come and place a mezuzah on her door. And she, she wasn't able to find anyone who was prepared to come up there to do it. So this was her solution to that problem. She put her Hanukkiah in her window in the absence of having a mezuzah on her door. Again, for me, this in, in terms of a photograph that trades in ideas, uh, for me, this is a photograph in which all of these things, all of these ideas converge at the same moment in one frame. Her attachment to the land and her, her refusal to, to be defeated in the search for a solution to affirm the fact that a Jewish person lives in this home. Can we go to the next one? Uh, this also is an image that uh, plays around with the idea of um, an individual's relationship to his place. This is John Pear. He's a, uh, a wildlife photographer. Um, at, at the time he was living up in Skye, um, he and, and his wife Linda have since moved down to, uh, down south, as I understand it's called, uh, to, to the Norwich area. Uh, but uh, for years, he and Linda lived up in Skye, and um, he's a landscape photographer. Uh, and I thought that what I would do to photograph John was work around the idea of the relationship of a Scottish Jew to, to the place, uh, the, 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 the geographic sense of place. And we went out to, um, uh, th this is a place called Neast Point where there's a, uh, there's a lighthouse. And it's, uh, uh, it's a very bleak and barren, very Scottish kind of landscape I found. Uh, so that's where I decided to photograph John, a, a landscape photographer against the backdrop of a landscape photograph. But uh, what I found very interesting about um, John's approach to his identification as a Jew was not so much with the, uh, with the conventional expressions of relationship, uh, John's, John's expression of Judaism took the form of um, his relationship to the Scottish landscape, which is what drove his photography. Uh, we had some very interesting discussions about that. I, uh, I was really fascinated by uh, this, this kind of low level definition of, uh, you know, this slow burn definition of Judaism as opposed to, um, you know, cooking your Judaism on a high flame on the, on the oven. This, uh, this was kind of, um, this was a, a very, a more spiritual uh, expression of his Judaism, which I, I found absolutely fascinating. Uh, can we go to the next one, Fiona? This, uh, this is a sign pointing to John and Linda's house. If you follow that path, if you see that path to the left of the sign, see that path that takes you all the way down to the, uh, to, to, to the coast. And th this gives you an idea of, of how the two of them lived. Uh, very much about being attached to the wide open bleak landscape of, of, of sky. And the sign refers to uh, a business that they ran out of their front room. They ran a tea room uh, out of the front room of their house so that people traveling around the island, tourists traveling around the island, uh, could stop in for a cup of tea and a slice of homemade cake that Linda was, uh, was baking. Okay, could I have the next one, please, Fiona? 
the uh, this image takes us uh, down yet another path that I was exploring, which is how do you belong without surrendering a part of your identity? In other words, how, how can you express your Jewishness as part of the Scottish Jewish community uh, No, let me take that the other way around. Can you belong without surrendering a part of your identity? How? Let me get this right. <laughs> um, how do you how do you express your Scottishness without surrendering an aspect of your Jewishness? It get, gets a bit complicated, but these these are complicated ideas. Uh, and this, th this picture basically uh, tries to explore that idea, um, how, you, uh, how you can be Scottish and Jewish at the same time. And the, the answer I found was in the Burns Night celebration at the uh, um, Liberal Synagogue in, uh, uh, in Glasgow. Um, this is... The Sorry? Reform. Oh, the Reform, sorry. Yeah, the Reform Synagogue. Um, and this is uh, uh, piping, piping out the haggis at Burns Night uh, at the synagogue. Uh, this is in the kitchen, and uh, the piper, who's a member of the congregation, is uh, tuning up his bagpipe. The woman next to him is holding the uh, kosher haggis. Uh, on the plate and they're getting ready to come out through the, 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 the doors in front of them to the congregation that's seated around in, uh, in, in the large function room for their Burns Night celebration. But uh, this basically is a photograph that tries to explain how you can be both Scottish and Jewish at the same time. A Burns Night in a shul. It's, it's, the, it's the convergence of, of both of those identities in the same place at the same time. If we go to the next photograph, again, this, uh, this photograph tries to work around the same idea of being able to, um, to be Scottish without surrendering your Jewishness. This, this is a photograph that, uh, you know, it, I, I took it in the parking lot of the uh, Gifnak Shul, um, that's uh, Chaim, the rabbi, uh, getting out of his car. And this is a photograph that 20 years ago, I very much doubt you could have taken in Scotland. This is a photograph about being Scottish and completely open about your Jewishness. In fact, not just open, but proud. This is, you know, say it loud and say it proud. Chaim drives around with this sign on his car. I've seen him all over town driving around with this. And I, I thought it was quite a remarkable statement, quite a contemporary statement of how the Scottish Jewish community deals with its with with the Jewish dimension of uh, of its identity. Uh, if we can go to the next one, Fiona. Uh, this also is uh, is a photograph that. Um, explores the the community's uh, uh, relationship uh, to to its Jewish culture and Jewish heritage. This is um, the uh, function room in the Garnet Hill Synagogue, uh, just before a, um, a coffee afternoon uh, gets underway, and I was struck by something very subtle, but what I, what I consider to be very, very telling and very profound, really. And that is the small Israeli flag um, stuck in a vase on the sill by the window. 
for me, this photograph said something very, very telling about uh, the Jewish community's relationship to what we all consider to be the Jewish base, which is Israel. Uh, this is a photograph about proportionality, I was left feeling, that um, in the large constellation of, Scottish, of, of, of being Scottish and, and the, um, the place in which um, Jewishness fits into Sc Scottishness, you then have the relationship uh, you, you then have the relationship of where Israel fits into Scottish Jewishness. So it's, it's Scottishness, Jewishness, and then the relationship of Israel to both of those. And this photograph for me kind of played around with that idea that, that um, Israel occupies a small corner in that place in which Scottish Jews define their their Scottishness and their Jewishness. Uh, if we can go to the next slide. Up in Aberdeen, you have the the same ideas playing around with themselves. Uh, this is the the room in the Aberdeen synagogue upstairs from the from the shul, uh, which they use as their function room for kiddush after after their services, and. Uh, Hanging on the wall um, is an Israeli flag that, if I understand the story correctly, was brought to the synagogue when Israel was still Palestine. In other words, this was a sort of underground flag that had been prepared in advance of declaring the, 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 the formal establishment of the Jewish state. Uh, this 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 flag was was brought to uh, to Aberdeen uh, around the uh, towards the end of the British mandate in in Palestine, and has been hanging on the wall there ever since. Uh, again, this is a, a photograph like the previous one that tries to explore the idea behind. The, the Jewish community's relationship to Israel. Uh, can we go to the next one? Thanks. Uh, a corollary idea of this, uh, this issue of identity and surrender is, do you have to surrender any aspect of your identity to belong? Uh, this is a question that's confronted um, minorities everywhere throughout history as they try to settle in, in their host societies. Do you have to surrender something about your fundamental identity in order to, to belong? Uh, Europe is now confronting this question um, with Muslim immigration, for example. How much of who you are and and what you are, do you have to give, do you have to give up in order to fit in? And this next series of photographs uh, explores that issue of um, uh, fitting in. Uh, this one, literally, this, uh, th this is a photograph um, taken in Slater's, uh, which many of you know is a, a Jewish menswear um, emporium in uh, in Glasgow. My understanding is that at one point uh, uh, the Guinness Book of Records uh, held it to be the largest menswear store in Europe. Uh, there's something about the body language in these two photographs, in this photograph, without actually knowing whether either of the two men in, in this photograph are in fact Jewish. Uh, because I, I, I didn't ask in, in the way I work, I, I sometimes um, uh, just stand and observe without actually talking to the people that I'm photographing. Uh, and this is one such case. Uh, without knowing exactly, without knowing um, uh, factually whether either of these two men are Jewish, 
Nevertheless, there was something that struck me about their body language, which was very Jewish. The, uh, the, the salesman trying to sell the customer the suit has something of a, of a very uh, historic kind of schmata salesman kind of um, uh, body language in the way he's proffering the garment to the customer holding it almost in a, in a reverential sort of way. And uh, the customer for himself uh, is, is looking at the suit in, in a very quizzical sort of way, the, the way he's, he's, he's touching his, uh, his belly as if to, to try and uh, divine for himself whether this garment is going to fit. But this is uh, this is about this is about being Jewish in a in a not necessarily Jewish environment. This is about uh, this is about trying to fit into the to the larger host society. Okay, can we go to the next one? Uh, this photograph also trades in the same idea. This is uh, uh, Officer Cadets from uh, the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst um, on the uh, uh, marching out parade in Dalbidi after they've uh, completed a live fire exercise. Um, th this is uh, the Scottish Regiment and they were um, uh, about to be deployed to Afghanistan. And um, the the soldier in the in the second row in the middle of the photograph, uh, Fiona is now uh, pointing out. Yes, exactly. Uh, th this photograph is uh, a Jewish lieutenant, and uh, he was uh, he was the reason that I was photographing at the uh, army exercise range up in Dalbidi. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd arranged to follow him around for, uh, for three or four days. And uh, for me, this is yet another example of uh, how the Scottish Jewish community is about fitting in seamlessly to, to its host community. Uh, Being a soldier uh, is a way of expressing your relationship to to your to your community, to your larger community, to the host community, uh, without having to surrender any part of your personal identity as as a Scottish Jew. So, for this lieutenant. He's wrapping up very neatly in one package his Jewish identity with his national identity. Uh, and I, you know, I, I found that to be um, a, very, a very telling and a very contemporary uh, approach to expressing, uh, expressing, expressing your Jewishness. Can we go to the next one? Uh, this is a father and his son um, at a uh, Celtic football game at the moment that uh, Celtic has scored a goal. And again, this is in, similar to the, the photograph of the, uh, of the Jewish soldier. Uh, this is uh, an expression of contemporary Jewishness. Uh, part of the uh, uh, b belonging to this football tribe as opposed to um, the Jewish tribe. Uh, this, this is yet another tribe that as Scottish Jews, this father and his son can belong to without necessarily surrendering or compromising anything to do with, with, with their Jewishness. Next one, Fiona. Uh, this is uh, a whiskey chemist uh, visiting a distillery up in Kupar. 
uh, he travels around um, contracted by the various distilleries to uh, sample the, the whiskey that's been uh, set aside to age in the casks uh, to assure their, their purity, their quality. Uh, again, this is an image that um, seeks to reinforce the fact that you can have an identity, uh, a, a, a professional identity that is quite separate from your Jewish identity and doesn't require you to compromise one or the other. The next one. And the, the last in this series about uh, uh, treading in, in both identity camps uh, is this photograph from a, uh, a brownie pack meeting at uh, the Gifnak Synagogue. Um, this young girl is waving a Scottish flag and again, this, uh, for me, this was one of those moments where um, everything converges at the same time in the same frame. Uh, it's a, uh, a brownie pack meeting in a synagogue hall and um, there's a very, a very visible, uh, graphically visual uh, expression of her, her national identity as well as her spiritual identity. Uh, okay, if we can go to the next slide. This, uh, this takes me down um, yet another path, uh, which was quite a complex one. Um, for Scotland's Jewish minority, uh, surrendering any aspect of this identity, of its Jewish identity, um, has really never been an issue. Uh, in fact, there's a very telling story that explains a lot about this issue. At the dedication of Edinburgh's uh, uh, Orthodox Synagogue in 1930, uh, Rabbi Silas Deitches observed that Scotland is the only country in Europe never to have built ghettos and never to have shed a drop of Jewish blood. Uh, this next set of pictures tries to explore that really fascinating idea about Scotland's relationship to its Jewish community. Uh, I discovered that the, um, the Calderwood Lodge uh, school, their, uh, their oldest group, I, I forget whether it's the year sixes or sevens, perhaps one of you can, can remind me, is the oldest group the year sevens or the year sixes? It's year seven. Year sevens, okay. Uh, the, I discovered that the year sevens uh, are taken every year to Gla to, uh, am on a trip to Amsterdam to explore Jewish Amsterdam and to get a kind of, um, uh, to, to explore um, that aspect of European Jewry. Uh, and one of, the, one of the stops that this group makes on their Amsterdam tour is a trip to the Anne Frank house. And these, these, these photographs of these kids in, uh, in, in this particular location, um, I found very telling in terms of what, uh, what, what's known as a community's collective memory. Uh, this is this is how this is what the Scottish Jewish community does to drive across the message to its children about not forgetting n not forgetting who they are wh and where they have come from what their past has been like. Uh, 
these are the these are the um, the kids coming out of the Anne Frank house at the end of of the tour, and I was struck by the the looks on the faces of 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 the three girls in the frame. They're they're just speechless. Uh, there's a certain element of horror struck in 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 the looks on their faces. Uh, it's quite obvious that they have been profoundly moved by by this experience. Uh, now I'm going to show you two other photographs from the same situation, and the reason I'm doing this is to illustrate to you part of the difficulty that I had as a photographer in working on this project. In, in all of the situations that I photographed, basically I needed to come, even though I, even though I would spend anywhere up to a week in, in some, shooting in some of the locations and, 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 and following some of the people that I photographed, uh, in the final analysis, all I ever needed from any situation was one image. But from this trip to Glasgow, uh, from this trip to Amsterdam uh, with the school kids, uh, and particularly the, the, the visit to the Anne Frank house, I found myself looking, when I was editing all the material from the trip, I found myself looking at three photographs that I simply could not come to a determination about which was the one more compelling photograph. And I decided in the end to include all three of them because in, in the book, because each of them looked at the experience of the, 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 the class visit to the Anne Frank house from a slightly different angle. And I thought each of them were, uh, each of them was so compelling that I decided to leave all three in. So this is the first. Uh, this is at the end of their visit coming out of the house and you can see the, the reaction on their faces to the experience that they've just undergone. Fiona, if we could have the next one. This is in the, uh, one of the uh, educational classrooms inside the Anne Frank house. Uh, in which the, the um, Calderwood students are listening to a lecture from, uh, from one of the tour guides uh, about the history of the Frank family and, and, uh, and Frank's history. And the, the photograph of, uh, of Anne on the wall um, is situated in such a way that I was able to compose this photograph to, to convey the impression that, that Anne Frank is one of the participants in the conversation in this classroom. In, in terms of perspective and scale, she's, she's very close in scale to the, uh, to the two young girls who are listening to the lecture. Next one, please, Fiona. Uh, and this last photograph from from that uh, from that visit shows this uh, young Calderwood student who is not all that far away in age from Anne Frank herself. I think there might be a year or two difference in age. Uh, but the look this is inside the exhibition, uh, inside the Anne Frank house. Uh, the look on the young on the young student on the young Calderwood student's face left me with the impression that she understands very very clearly that but for you know a twist of fate and and um, and uh, a shift in time and place uh, her story could have been the same as uh, as Anne Frank's story. There's a, uh, there's a realization in, in the young student's face that uh, she could have been her uh, kind of trading places sort of idea here. And again, this, this photograph is about the, the profound impact 
that the the exposure to to this this moment in history has had on on this young Calderwood student. And uh, another aspect of of the photograph for me, in terms of of the design of the frame, just uh, you know, from a from a purely visual standpoint, is that um, the 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 graphic simplicity, the starkness between the the, the black and the white, um, perfectly dividing the two halves of the frames. This is uh, the the starkness of it all is is uh, a very appropriate way. It struck me of of crafting a photograph that deals with uh, the notion of the Holocaust. Is that there is a uh, um, it's it's stark. It's black and white. There's uh, there's a a simplicity about this that um, for me makes a very haunting construct that ties in very appropriately with issues of the Holocaust. Okay, and if we can go to the last slide. I think for me, this is one of the most important photographs of, uh, of, of the project. Um, it's about what the project taught me, what I discovered about um, being Scottish and being Jewish. Uh, for me, this is a photograph that um, acknowledges both this uh, this community's deep roots, um, its age, the wisdom it acquired, the experiences it's undergone, as well as it's acknowledging its natural, uh, its national cultural heritage. Uh, again, this is a this is a photograph that trades in convergence. You've got converging all in one frame. All of these, uh, all of these different issues, all of these different aspects, um, the the Jewish community with 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 its the, with the, the wisdom that it, it's acquired, the 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 experience of history that it's uh, that it's undergone, and this um, this acknowledgement, this 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 icon of of Scottish national cultural heritage. Um, Burns poetry, all all in one all in one frame, um, at a Jewish event at the Burns night at the Lachaim restaurant in the Gifnach synagogue. Uh, something that that really drove me throughout the project was um, uh, the sudden understanding of a, um, of a statement that a photog an American photographer called Bruce Davidson, whose work I, I have been very influenced by, uh, I read a quote of his that I found um, very appropriate to my work on this project, which is, uh, he said, my photographs aren't so much about telling a story as they are about my relationship to the story. And that's something that I, I, I discovered um, in the year that I, I was taking these photographs. Um, what, was, what was driving my photography, I discovered, was my own relationship to the story. Uh, what I what what I was what I was watching what I was observing was other people's expressing and exploring and demonstrating their Jewishness in the same way that I have to do it for my myself every day in my own ways. Uh, what I suddenly found myself doing was um, watching other people doing the doing the same thing and uh, uh, I found that absolutely fascinating it was uh, this the, this this 
project was very unusual for me in that, uh, you know, I, I wasn't detached from it in the way that I very often find myself detached when I'm working for working on a story for a newspaper or a magazine. Uh, this, th this story, this story was, as, as the cliche has it, was very up close and personal uh, in, in a very, in a very large way. Um, I was photographing aspects of myself in this, which, um, which made for uh, some very reflective moments and for, for creating some, some very close and warm attachments with the people that I was photographing because we, uh, we, all, we all shared a kind of common, a common frequency of transmission uh, which was, um, which was our, our, our Jewishness. Uh, that's the end of the tour. Uh, if any of you have any questions, I'd be, I'd be more than happy to, to answer them. I'll just start by saying thank you so much, Judah. It's completely, totally and utterly riveting. <laughs> To, to watch you doing this tour. So at the same time that Judah was doing his photography, his photography collection, I was doing, I started the Being Jewish in Scotland Scottish Government funded research project where I was going around Scotland finding Jews. So we were on the same course, doing a completely different methodology to find the same, asking the same questions and finding it's just so interesting to see, you know, I did a report and I've also done, done a, a written PhD with words in it, you know, and it turns into a book. And it's just so fascinating to think that you can talk about Jewish identity with words or you can talk about it with images like this. And it's just so interesting to hear. I've stared at those pictures for so many years and it's just fascinating to hear you bring them to life and talk about them and talk about your stories behind them. So thank you so much for that. My pleasure.